this evening we have Dr. Beatrice talking to us on the principles of Long to Battalion. I can see you are relieved I'm going. <laughs> I can sense it. <laughs> uh, let's pray for the Terry. Our Father, we thank you for this, your servant, that you've given us this evening. Please, please speak to through her. And may you anoint her, may you grant her the grace and the ability to deliver your word and give us hearts that will receive your word with gladness and joy. And may it benefit us that we may too instruct others and build the kingdom of God. Your favor rest upon the Tari as she ministers, even right up to the end, O oh Lord. Grant us the spirit of patience and just to sit calmly, calmness of spirit as we receive your word. In Jesus' name. Today, we thank God for this 23rd day of January. The month is, go the year is running very fast. Everything is happening swiftly. So let us make our decisions quickly. So I welcome you all to this prayer training program today. Thank God for our visitors. My name is Beatrice Alovala, and today we are going to talk about the principles of belonging to a battalion. And we are going to use our Realizing the Destiny of People's Manuals. Those who don't have it, you can get it from the reception there. In this year, our theme for 2023 is Redigging the ancient well. Redigging the ancient wells. So let us remember that. But this term, we have a very special theme, and that is raising the Joshua generation. We are raising a Joshua generation in this term. Now, from this book, let us go to page 53. Let us turn to page 53 as we start our training from the manual. We shall be covering two lessons today. Despite C.S. Collins having taken time, I'm sure we'll be able to make it. Um, we are talking about a battalion. Many of us are not in the armed forces. So many of us do not understand issues of battalions. But I'll just make it simple for us. What is a battalion? A battalion is a large body of troops ready for battle. We've been told we are in battle. Or a large organized group of people pursuing a common goal. In intercessors for Kenya, are we ready for battle? Are we involved in battle? Yes. We have been told we are warriors, we are, we are involved in battle. So that is why we have the issues of battalion and we belong to battalions, isn't it? Each one of us, I believe, is in a battalion, except maybe the new ones. If you're not in a battalion, please talk to whoever's sitting next to you to refer you to somebody who can help you. Now, our objectives today, as we look at the discipline of the battalion, is to help prayer ministers build relationships with others of the same calling. Others of the same calling, especially in our case as prayer ministers. I believe when you come here, God has talked to you and you know you're in the, you are a prayer warrior, you are a prayer minister. And then to know and practice the required disciplines of the battalion and to develop to develop a determination that will enable each person finish God's given tasks so those are our objectives at the big, as we start this build discipline of the battalion now we have good examples in the bible in 1 Chronicles chapter 11 and 12, we'll be referring to them as we go along, and in 1 Samuel 22 and Joel 2, 
we read about the mighty men of David. And this mighty man came to David from different places. We see these men gathered unto David from Israel and Judah. And their sole purpose was to make David king. Yes, Saul was still reigning, that's true. But they came to make him king. They had been driven into debt and distress by the leadership of Saul, and they were totally discontent with his leadership. In other words, these people had their own challenges. Some were in debt. They were distressed. But irrespective of those challenges that they were having, irrespective of the circumstances they were going through, they were coming to make David king. All these were their different motivating forces behind their actions. They were men of courage. They had decisiveness, discipline, and great determination. They were all together daring. You see, these are men who could have been called rebels. At that time, they were actually rebels. They were ag going against the system. They were going against the government, you would say. But they were willing because they had one sole purpose. And that purpose was to make David king. What about us here? We are gathered here together. Because we want to make Jesus king. Isn't that why we are gathering together? We want to make him king. Now, when we look at David's mighty men, it's not only David who had warriors. Even Abraham in Genesis 14, we are told about the 300 plus men who were trained in his house. Is it possible to have an army of one person? It's not possible. So even Abraham had men in his army he had had an army in his family. When we look at 1 Chronicles 12, 2, I hope we'll all get time to read through these, verse, these chapters that have been put here. 1 Chronicles 12, 11 and 12. Please, please just look for time and read those particular verses. 1 Chronicles chapter... 12, sorry, chapter 12, verse 2 says, They were armed with bows and were able to shoot arrows or to sling stones right-handed or left-handed. And they were relatives of Saul from the tribe of Benjamin. These men could handle all sorts of weapons. They were bold and they were fierce and they were swift. We're being told about time, but we need to be swift in making decisions. When we look at verse 8 of First Chronicles 12, it says, Some Gadites defected to David at his stronghold in the wilderness. They were brave warriors. They were brave warriors. We must be brave warriors. They were ready for battle and able to handle shield and spear. How did they become ready for battle? They had gone through training. They had gone through practice. And they were able to handle the weapons. We were told about the weapons of our warfare. Are we able to use those, those weapons that have been given to us? This men were, men were trained and were ready to use all those weapons. And they had understanding of authority and submission to those in leadership. They had their leaders. They did not break rank. They were answerable to one another. They were answerable to one another. And that is the same with us in our battalions. Our battalions, we have leaders. We have those who are deputy leaders and those in different positions. We, are all, we all have to submit to authority. We have the ST. We have leaders in different ministries. So just like the mighty men of God, 
We must train ourselves to be able to handle the weapons that are available to us. Yes, we are going to use those weapons to make Jesus king. But where are we going to make him king? We are going to make Jesus king over our own lives, even as we give ourselves, first of all, to the Lord, as, we've been, as has been mentioned. We want to make Jesus king in our families. We want to make Jesus kings in the marketplace, in the seven mountains. We want to make Jesus king as we do this warfare. We have the weapons. We have been told what weapons are available. These men were able to use those weapons and give victory to David. We, have to, we need to be able to make king in the land, in redeeming the land, in prophetic action. All these ministries that we have, we must understand that that is what is expected of us. Now, the prayer warrior must be decisive. There are certain disciplines that we must develop as prayer warriors. We must be decisive. Great exploits are realized by decisive people. Prayer warriors are decisive people. They are called when things require hard decisions. Do you want to be a champion prayer warrior in the kingdom? You can if you will. So we must purpose in our hearts. For us to come here, we have decided that I want to be a prayer warrior and I want to be prepared. That's why we came here. Daniel, in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8, Daniel purposed to be different. He purposed that he will be different. What have I purposed to do in the prayer ministry? I must decide that I will no longer be average. And that's why I'm coming for this training. I do not want to be mediocre. I want to be prepared for this war that is, is ahead. And we can see here, we must take the step and we must go. We must go forward as prayer warriors. I decide, yes, I'm involved in this and I will step forward. I will step out and go to wherever I'm supposed to go, irrespective of the consequences. Of course, there'll be consequences. Be willing to accept responsibility for failure or success. See your vision, count the cost, and bet on it. Do not procrastinate or waver between different opinions. If I have decided I'm going to be a prayer warrior, I must decide and go for it and not start thinking, did God really call me here? If you had God right, then come and be a part of this battalion that is out to do warfare on behalf of the Lord. Now, we must be disciplined as battalions. That is why we have our disciplined forces. They are disciplined forces, and in the disciplined forces, it is impossible to serve without discipline. And that applies to battalions. In our battalions, we must be disciplined. In whatever team, it may not just be in the battalions, in the different teams that we are serving in, there has to be discipline. So in warfare, for you to win any warfare, you must be disciplined. They were men of might, men who are fit for battle. They could handle both shield and buckler. They were trained and fierce. Now, Satan's time is running out. The time is short and he's desperate. And what tells you he's desperate is the darkness that we are seeing that is increasing around us. In other words, he, the fight is becoming more furious. And if the fight is coming, becoming more serious, then we as the warriors, we must be prepared. We must be ready to fight for souls, for land, for government. There's so much we have to be engaged in. We are not going to sit back. We are in the forefront, and especially intercessors for Kenya, we are told we are the tip of the arrow. 
which means we are going to meet the initial resistance. So let us be prepared to engage. Let us be pre proactive. Intercessors for Kenya is a pioneering ministry. We do not fight fires. We do not wait for things to happen. And then we go and put out the fire. No. We must be ahead and not allow the fire to start burning. We see the Gadites. They had faces like those of lions. When you look at Proverbs 28, 1, it says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Today we need to be bold when we go out. We must be bold like a lion as we go out. We must release all those things that the enemy is taking hold of. Or whatever he has held, he must let go. And he will only let go if he sees that we are actually serious and ready for battle. We must be a threat to the enemy, throwing him and his cohorts into panic. He must know us by our name. Only our parents must send chills or fear down his spine because he knows we will not turn back. Once we set out, we go forward. We must be swift. David's men were swift. Prayer warriors must be swift in their pursuit. The Gadites were swift. May God help us to be swift as the rose on the mountains. In 2 Samuel 2.18, we see that Azahel was a swift-footed man. And this is what David said. He makes my feet like hinds feet, able to stand firmly and make progress on the dangerous heights of testing and trouble. He sets me securely upon my high places. That is Psalm 18.33, the Amplified Version. Therefore, we need to make swift progress and move forward. Because if we don't, do not make swift progress, then the enemy can easily come and overtake us. So let us move forward on these dangerous heights of testing and trouble. It doesn't matter. We will move on. Many African Christians have gone through days of great testing and trouble. They have been trained to make progress despite dangerous heights. They have developed discipline of work, faithfulness, prayer, and seeking God through hardship. The word of God says we are more than conquerors. But in this world, there is trouble. In John 16, 33. Please just make note of some of these verses that are not there. If we read all of them, I don't think we'll not have much time left. So John 16, 33. In the world, there will be trouble. So at the back of my mind, our minds, we must know that the trouble is there. But we are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors in Jesus. So even as we go forward swiftly, instead of hesitating, we know already the victory is ours. Prayer warriors must respect authority. We as prayer warriors, the guidites who are disciplined in matters of authority, like the Benjamites, they recognized order in rank. Not everyone was a leader. They recognized and respected each other in their appointed places of ministry. Each had a duty to, to do. And that is why, even in Ephesians 4, 11 to 13, God gives different positions to different people. Each one has their assignment. The apostles have their function. The prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists. God is the one who gave them those positions. And we must also keep in mind that that is how it is. God will give us different positions of authority. And we must respect those positions. Likewise, even as we develop a proper respect and understanding of the authority, of authority if we are to advance and champion God's kingdom. We must recognize the fact that it is God who sets us in our respective places and therein we are important. Whatever position God has given you for this season, many of these positions that we have are seasonal. So the position you are in for now, it is important to God. Be faithful in that position. 
Be faithful in that position. Do not complain. Do not murmur. Because whoever you're murmuring against, next time you will be in that position. And you will not want people to murmur against you. We must remember that we are useful and important not because of our rank, but because of where we have been placed and whose we, we are. His own blood purchased us and appointed us and our, call, our appointment and our calling is in Christ Jesus. Now, practice submission. We must practice submission. If we are to achieve anything in Christ's kingdom, we must learn to practice submission. His kingdom is an orderly kingdom. When we look at 1 Corinthians 12, 9, let me just read 1 Corinthians 12, 9. This is what it says. Eze was the chief, Obadiah the second in command, Eliab the third, Mishmana the fourth, Jeremiah the fifth, Atai the sixth, and it goes on. All of them in different positions. They were in rank and order. One man came under the authority of the other. No one was a law unto himself. They submitted to their leaders and to one another. There is this quotation that we have here. There is no formation without submission. Formation requires not only submission, but also intersubmission. Our trouble in the church is that we want to have authority and still be independent. That is impossible. It is not possible for us to, be, to have authority without submitting. And that is the challenge that the children of Israel went through. When we read Numbers, we all know the story of Dathan, and Abiram and their teams, when they rebelled against Moses, and also when Aaron and Miriam were not happy with Moses, and they were punished, because that was the authority that was there at that particular time, and they did not submit to it. So all of us here are under authority. There's nobody here who's not under authority. Even our apostle is under authority. Each one of us, the SD, everyone, wherever you, we are, we are under authority. These men recognized authority without competing with one another. Each one know, knew their place. It was not an issue of competition. It was an issue of working where you have been placed. And that is what they did. Now, if we are to excel as prayer warriors, we shall do well to take heed to these principles. That is verse 50, uh, chapter, page 55. We do not need to compete or compare each other. We simply need to discover who is the one set above us and below and operate in supervision and submission. Let us not think we are in competition. God is the one who gives leaders and is the one who gives those who are following us so let us just submit to those positions that we have been given and walk in that. These warriors, as warriors, we must be daring. Each one of these men was a challenger. They crossed the Jordan in the first month. And at that time of the month, it was overflowing. But they crossed. Although it was dangerous to cross, it was also the time of barley harvest. These daring men recognized that despite the floods, there was a harvest. Are there challenges that we are having when it comes to issues of ministry? Yes, they will be there. But are we willing to overcome those challenges and just be daring and say, I will go forward? These men did it and there was victory. Prayer warriors do not do do not wait until the water level is low. Are we going to wait for the safe period? Are we going to wait for it to stop raining before we come for the meeting here? When it rains, we can't go out because that's, we will get wet, but only we don't melt. So I don't know why we are afraid of the rain. So let us not give excuses. Or when it's too hot, maybe some say, I can't come, it's too hot. 
Let us not have excuses. They had no excuse to give. Even when it was flooded, they said, we will go. Even they, when there's no money, we will go to Israel. <laughs> <laughs> so the lesser was equal to over 100, and the greater was equal to over 1,000. The Lord himself will strengthen us. God gave them capacity to challenge every situation. We are not going to do it in our own strength. He is the one who gave them the capacity to be able to go through those situations. Prayer warriors surface when times are hardest. They come to the fore in times of crisis. So crisis is their finest hour. This is our finest hour. They know that when duty calls, courage rises with danger. We know that darkness is getting worse, so we must arise. That's why the word of God tells us, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon us. So let us arise. Let us be daring and go forward. Prayer warriors are determined. They keep at it no matter what. They do not lose zeal or focus, okay? They are men of determination. They are women of determination. They were determined to do a thorough job. Are we determined to do a thorough job for Christ? In our families, in our workplaces, wherever the Lord has called us in the different ministries, in redeeming the land that God has given us, let us be determined. The devil does not care how many projects we begin as long as we do not finish them. He only wants to sidetrack us. We cannot get you to lose interest and zeal. Then he will have succeeded. That is what he's looking for. What is it that is distracting you? What is distracting me from coming or from going out on missions? We must be focused. And zeal must be there. Many prospective champions have been sidetracked. They have quit the race. Am I going to, are we going to quit the race? Are we going to quit the race? We must be determined. We must not be ignorant of Satan's devices. He has derailed many through the deception of imitation and compromise. These, are forces, these forces are very subtle. We give him a walkover when we quit. So we will not quit. Job was stable in his faith. Are we stable and ready to do battle? Let us be strong in the Lord. Let us be strong and not give up. Because then we will have said, Satan, you have won. Let us not give him that pleasure of being of succeeding. Now, are there some who give up? Yes. And there are many who, may gi who will give up. Some Christians have given up their prayer ministry calling because of different reasons. The dis different reasons will vary. It may be lack of commitment. It may be some who are looking for encouragement. And yet David, when he was in trouble, he did not look for encouragement from people. He looked for encouragement from the Lord. That is where our encouragement comes from. Let us not look for encouragement from somebody else, from my leader. No, my leader has, is busy with their own things. They may be having, needing their own encouragement. So let us look for encouragement from the Lord, the way David did or just inadequacies in their own personalities. Maybe you have issues in the, in the family, maybe in your own life, but this should not deter us because whatever we are doing is not in our own strength. This one is a very unfortunate one where we say lack of resources or support system. How many prayer warriors have quit because they lack resources, because they lack a support system? This should not be. It should not be, although it is happening. Because our God is the great I am. He is the great I am for that season when you need to go to Israel and you need finances. 
he is the great I am. He is there. He is the great I am when a challenge comes in the family and you have to do warfare because of issues with the children. He says, I am. He is there with us in every situation. So as prayer warriors, let us not give up. Some of these issues that make us give up are things that God has already said, look, I'm here. Let me know. Lack of faith in themselves. When we look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they had faith. It didn't matter where they were going to be put, but they said, here we are. We shall be on the Lord's side no matter what. Daniel was on the Lord's side, despite the lions. He has never said there will be no challenges, even as we, I re said earlier. The Lord says challenges are coming, so be prepared. <coughs> Warriors must finish every task. Let us do what God has called us to do. We do what God has called us to do. We imitate Christ who said, my food, nourishment, is to do the will, pleasure of him who sent me and to accomplish and completely finish the work. In John 4, 3, verses 3 and 4. I have glorified you here on earth by completing the work that you gave me to do. That also in John 17, 4. Jesus also said, it is finished. So he finished his task. Paul also finished the task given to him by Christ. I do not esteem my life dearly to myself. If only I may finish my course with joy and ministry, which I have obtained of and trusted to me by the Lord Jesus. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. 2 Timothy 4, 7. So here are examples of those who finished the tasks. Prayer warriors must finish the task. Because a war, if you leave it halfway, then you know what will happen. The enemy will arise ag again. At the end, I must ask myself, was I faithful? Only I can answer that question. Only you can answer that question. Have you been faithful in what you were called to do? Now, as I mentioned, we all belong to battalions. In the kingdom of God, you know, there are no spectators. Because everybody's assignment and place is marked out. So if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, then that place, somebody's missing. So there's a hierarchy even in the battalion. Now, let's see the objectives when we belong to a battalion. Let's look at some of these objectives. To enable the intercessors practice the disciplines of the battalion. We've looked at those disciplines. Also to enable the intercessor to come into divine relationships for the purpose of the kingdom. To enable the intercessors to know the heartbeat of God and align with it. So we are here as prayer warriors. We are not going to be spectators. We are not going to watch as others do the work. We are there as warriors in our own right. So when we belong to a battalion, we belong to that one team. And what happens? Each individual benefits from the rest of the battalion and together they gain strength and courage to wage war against the enemy. Because each one of us has different strengths and each one complements the other. And in that way, one with discernment, one will have faith, it will be easy for us to help one another and be strong. Belonging to a battalion also breeds support. We get to know one another, to pray for one another, to just support each other and share issues. So let us be prepared to belong to a battalion because we will have support around us. When we fall, the others will help us get up. Now, belonging also promotes soundness. We are accountable to each other. When we are sound in doctrine, there's credibility and people are willing to follow us. They are willing to entrust their lives and material resources to us, not so with loners. 
if somebody is on their own, then who is willing to stand with them? We cannot even trust one who is on their own. So belonging to a battalion also breeds security. Many servants of the Lord have lost their vitality and balance because of insecurity. Insecurity allows the gulfs of, of schisms and carnal pursuits to drift them far apart from their brethren. When we are together, it's easy for us to focus on the job that is ahead of us. So, determining how to belong. All of us must determine to belong to these battalions. That is why we are in battalions. To belong to the battalions of prayer warriors. Now, how do we belong to battalions? There is the issue of commitment. We have the prerogative to question commitment before we accept and establish those with whom we should advance our cause, especially if they seem to be close to us. You know, the Bible says a man's force will be those of his own house. Matthew 10, 26 and Micah 7, 6. So we must take precautions. We must use our right to question and scrutinize people's commitments. So if I'm called and I'm asked, oh, I have not seen you, it is okay, it is fine. It will help us avoid possible future disappointments and frustration. Those who are called into the cause will not fear the scrutiny, for therein lies their security. If I'm called to the prayer ministry and I'm asked, how come you have not come? That's okay. It will help me be accountable and be consistent in what I am doing. So be willing to share openly by working, be willing to share openly by the working of the Spirit. These men made a commitment to David. They all made a commitment to David and they said in First Chronicles 12, 18, yours we are David and on your side, you son of Jesse. They decided, like we must tell Jesus today and purpose that Jesus, we are yours. And on your side, we will be always. We must be a people who are unafraid of making commitments. The cause of Christ has suffered through the years because of men and women who could not say, we are yours, Jesus. God forbid that we should do such a thing. We are yours, Jesus, and on your side. That is a commitment that we must make together, that we are the Lord's. Now, when we belong to a battalion, we know we are in divine relationships. It's God who puts battalions together. As prayer warriors, we must relate through these divine arrangements. God brings people together into relationships to serve divine purposes. Many have failed to understand such divine arrangements and have separated themselves from it. When we separate ourselves, we fail to achieve the fullness of what God has intended. And we know in I4K, we have been a family. We have stood with many in different situations. In sicknesses, in accidents, we've been able to stand with one another. Even in deaths, we have seen people in your team stand with you. And that is what it is like to belong to a battalion. So take time to read this 1 Samuel chapter 18 to 20, and just study the men of David. No, this is Jonathan. How Jonathan and David related with one another. In verse 1, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. Love is the foundation of our divine relationship. Jonathan loved David as much as he loved himself. Haven't you found people here who love you? Yes. In our battalions, even in I4K generally, there are people who, who love us. We love one another. Let us make love the cornerstone because in love then we can work together. Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan took off the robe he was wearing and gave it to David along with his tunic and even his sword, his bow and his belt. That is the kind of love that Jonathan had. 
Jonathan understood that their relationship was ordained by God and he submitted to God's divine arrangement. He gave up his robe, which was a symbol of his kingship, as Saul's son, he was expected to be the king. He was supposed to rule, but now here he is because he understood God's purpose for putting him there. He was ready to submit to whatever God wanted. He gave David everything that pertained to him as king because he trusted him completely. There must be trust among us. We must trust one another. Now, God divine, provided this divine relationship to protect David because whenever Saul wanted to harm him, Jonathan would warn him. So we, are, we pray for one another. We pray for each other's protection. We pray for each other's family. So that is what the battalion does. As prayer warriors, as a team, we are a protection for one another. The appointment of the 12 apostles was such a divine arrangement. Left on their own, they may not have chosen to work together. But Christ divinely brought them together to be the founders of the Christian church. We don't know how that happened, but Jesus inquired of the Father, and he was given those names. So this was a divine appointment. Those who are willing, those who will bring nations into their prophetic destinies must realize that they belong first and foremost to a, a divinely arranged relationship, not merely to a prayer group. We are in a divinely arranged relationship. As I for K, I for K doesn't belong to Apostle Phoebe. It doesn't belong to any of us. It belongs to God. You heard where it started. It started in Israel. Intercessors for Kenya belongs to God. So even as we come here, we know we are in a divine relationship with one another because God is calling each one of us. Some of the people God brings your way will be unpleasant. We will have all sorts of people. But all these who will be there, will, through this difficulty, God will purge us. God will teach us. God will mold us. God will make us the people that he wants us to be. God will also work on your heart. Because... You know, God has in, is interested in my growth and maturity. So through all those challenges with others around me, God will grow me and mature me and mature you and mature all of us. So our hearts must beat like God's hearts. What is it that concerns God? There must be complete harmony with God's heart in everything we do, otherwise the vision dies. Our hearts must beat like his. Our hearts must be pure like his. His desires from the inmost being must be ours. This is imperative if his cause is to be advanced and his kingdom is established. Otherwise, we fail. What is it that is concerning God? What concerns God? That should be my first concern. God is concerned about people. God is concerned about souls. God is concerned about institutions, about countries. God is concerned about land. God is concerned about leadership. God is concerned about the seven mountains. In the marketplace where we are, God is concerned. So that is God's concern. And that, as I have that concern, as I take onto my, onto my heart what is on God's heart, then I can be able to do warfare in those areas that God has laid out for me. By the same token, those who want to follow us and support our vision must be in harmony with our hearts and our vision. Therefore, all those who are coming here, we do not take them for granted. It's the Lord who's bringing you here. We must not act based on the surface look of things. God gives us the courage and patience to dig deeper, to establish the real state of affairs before we make any decisions. 
And then one major thing, be an active participant as we said earlier. It is time for us to go. Ask God where you go. And the going does not mean I have to walk out. Where has God called me to go? Is it in the external prayer training program? Is it to go with the prophetic action team? With redeeming the land, is there places that God wants me to go? The doors are open. Let us be prepared to go. Beware of betrayers. Betrayers will be there. When building a battalion, we must know that not everyone who wants to belong has been called by God. And this is a word of caution. Though we are seeking to establish divine relationships, we must test the spirit to see if everything we are engaging in is from God. And David did just that. He questioned those who came to him in 1 Chronicles 12, 17, when the second team from the tribe of Benjamin came, he asked them, if you have come to me in peace to help me, I am ready to have you unite with me. But if you have come to betray me to my enemies, seeing there is no wrong in my hands, the Lord of, of our fathers look thereof and rebuke you. That is in First Chronicles 12, 17. So let us beware, let us be conscious that even in our midst there will be betrayers. Many so-called servants of God may be betrayers. They are betraying the Lord to his enemies. The spirit of Judas Iscariot is not dead. He has many descendants today. Here are some ways they are imitating him. Are we holding offices merely for financial advantages? Are there advantages that we are looking for? Holding titles that are not God-given merely for prestige? Apostles, prophets, reverend, bishop, archbishop? Each one of these titles, they are good, but they, are, they have very specific function. Unless God has called you to it, then we are running the wrong race. Joining a ministry just because of free training but lack a true calling and anointing. Minimizing and belittling what others spend time to do in the kingdom and wanting to lift self. Seeking religious responsibilities and forgetting to love the Lord and his anointing. First and foremost, our appointment, our, our responsibility is to love the Lord. Being unrepentant and untouchable, even when confronted openly with our, for, for their sins, David was a man after God's own heart, but he was very ready to repent. Not honoring or keeping the vows that they made to serve the Lord. Fearing the price or take the risks that are consequences of true discipleship. Being dishonest, insincere, and faithful with God's gifts bestowed upon us. So betrayal is real in every area. And we must be careful because it can be infectious. It can be infectious and influence others who may not realize it. Dear brethren, it is important that we are not lone rangers. It is important that we work as a team, that we work together under the leading of the Holy Spirit, under the authority of the leadership that the Lord has given us, each one playing their part. And the Lord himself has assured us of victory, even as we continue. We thank God for his word. And may the Lord bless you. Yes. Yes.